Okay. Thanks for introducing me. I'm Carlo Andrea Biraghi. I will be the only one speaking today and presenting this research uh, that we made with Professor Tadi and Professor Mazera, and is based on the master thesis of the three other students that you mentioned, Tommaso, Maria, and Elena. I'm currently a research fellow at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, but this research started when I was still, let's say, finishing my PhD at the uh, Department of Architecture, Building Environment, and Construction Engineering, uh, still at Politecnico. Uh, this research okay, uh, starts from the following motivation that is uh, um, defining or better refining a methodology for uh, sustainable urban regeneration. And we try to answer the following research question. The first one is define an optimal GFA, so GLOR4 area uh, amount for the redevelopment of an area, even if we have, of course, some um, urban planning uh, let's say standard data, then evaluate these streets environmental performances and understand their link with the uh, morphology that is associated to alternative transformation scenarios. To do this, we mostly used the uh, IMM methodology uh, that I will explain better in a, in a while that I put here the link to deepen this uh, uh, approach that, is, that has been developed at Polytechnic of Milano and some BIM tools for uh, the local optimization of a, of a master plan. So uh, I will first start with some premises that are some concepts that I'm not going through in detail because otherwise it will take too much time, but I give as accepted, let's say, before starting the presentation. Then moving to the IMM methodology, to the uh, project of the Porto di Mare Eco District, that is the case study we use for uh, demonstrating this uh, approach, and then deeper in the multi-layer modeling processes for the local optimization. The premises are, uh, of course, it is pretty evident from the conference of today, the city's impact on climate change, and also uh, that is mentioned by the SDG number 11, that I don't need to spend further words because it was, uh, we heard plenty of presentation on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, the second one is cities intended as a complex adaptive system. Uh, and also here, I mean, uh, many, many of the presentation highlighted the complexity of all the, and the interrelation of the different aspects of the city in the definition of their morphology and performances. Then in order to motivate the choice of the case study, there is the Milan attractivity for investment uh, in, the last, uh, in the last decade that started from Expo 2015 and then went on with the uh, Porta Nuova, City Life, Scalofarini, and finally also the Reinventing Cities uh, C40 competition. And also the Eco District definition that is, uh, uh, let's say, a way, a way of a, a specific kind of Euro transformation that set, specific, that set uh, ambitious uh, performance goals. So that combines, let's say, uh, a normal master planning activity with an integrated approach towards uh, also the management. The picture you see here is the, taken from the OMA project of the Scalofarini that shows this uh, future provision of growth for Milan with this sort of adaptable master plan. Moving to the IMM methodology, as I said, is a methodology developed at Polytechnic of Milano, and its main goal is demonstrating the relation between urban morphology and environmental performances. It is age, and it is mainly composed by four uh, phases. The first one is the diagnostic that aims at understanding and showing both visually and numerically the uh, structure of the built environment and its performances through some performance indicators. The second one, that's called assessment and formulation, uh, moves from the result of the first and identify among the different elements that we'll explain in a while which are the weakest one that could be uh, the first to be modified in order to drive the transformation. The third one at, the, at this stage, that is the intervention and modification is let's say nothing more than the design phase, but that in the future could see the uh, implementation of eventually some generative uh, algorithm um, components or generative design. And the fourth one is the retrofit and local optimization that uh, is nothing more than, let's say, coming back to the first. So repeating the, um, the phases, but not on the state of the art, but on the uh, transformative scenario. So in order to assess the benefits or even the uh, problem generated by different alternatives. The elements that can be identified inside the methodologies are the components that are, let's say, the uh, 
main elements which every urban context can be dismantled in, like volumes, voids, network, and type of uses. The key categories are seen as the integration of these components and are some, let's say, properties that are uh, currently investigated by many scholars, like the porosity, the accessibility, the permeability, and the diversity of the urban environment, that they move from the very, even from theoretical um, uh, text from urban planning literature that we try to transform into something that is measurable and also then indicators to assess the performance and design order in principle as some, let's say, uh, guide guidelines to drive the transformation towards um, more sustainable. Uh, I was saying uh, that the determinant can be seen as three um, goals to be achieved in order to have a resilient or efficient form that are a compact form, a complex, and uh, so compactness, con uh, complexity, and connectivity. Then, uh, let's say all these um, elements that I mentioned before are interlinked and uh, allow to uh, arrive to a final proposal of a design uh, solution and then repeat this assessment process. Uh, going to the uh, what I didn't mention about this methodology, that is that it can be uh, applied to possibly every kind of urban context, because it, it is also has been already applied, for example, to the world's largest favela of Rio de Janeiro, that is the Rossinha area, to this area in um, in Milan, or even in previous uh, project in Barcelona or in Belgrade in other European cities. Uh, moving to the to the case study is an area in the southeast periphery of Milan. Uh, is an underdeveloped area also with abusive settlements that is included in the transformation area of the PGT and it was also formally included in the European 2012 uh, competition and uh, is now totally property of Milan municipality and there's this uh, curious uh, thing that uh, uh, stimulate also our research because from one PGT uh, that is let's say the building and urban planning regulation of the city of Milan to the other the uh, total amount of possible glor, um, gross floor area that could be a uh, ground floor area that could be uh, located move uh, past from um, 130 to 820 due to some due to the inclusion of some additional portion that previously were uh, not supposed to be built so that uh, make us raise the question how is it possible that in the same area we can locate like six time the amount of uh, um, of buildings and ultimately also of people. The project has been already presented in other, let's say, publication and has been developed not just as a, a, a theoretical study, even if it started with some international workshop, but I've seen the partnership with uh, uh, some local entities as the GRIM, that is an ecologist group, the uh, API that is uh, related to uh, small and medium enterprises and also some uh, uh, international universities as the bargaining and one for the aspects more related to the uh, countryside uh, part of the project. Here I don't go uh, deep into that but you can see some of the visual outputs of the first retrofitting of our master plan because uh, uh, what I'm presenting in, in, this, um, in this paper is not uh, the, um, let's say, I'm not starting from the full refurbishment of an area, but we give as accepted an initial master plan, that is the one that you've seen in the previous slide. And now, and we tried uh, different strategies to implement again the performance of this master plan, and we compare it against the um, state of the art and an alternative transformation. So here are the, let's say, visual output of the different key categories. And in addition to that, we develop also some, let's say, uh, diagram based on numerical metrics describing these uh, uh, urban properties. Here I show just the porosity as an example, where you can see the three different stages. So the state of the art, the uh, eco district in green and an alternative transformation in red that can be read, let's say, both from the visual and the numerical uh, way. For each of these uh, um, scenarios that are displayed here just from the volumetric point of view uh, on the bottom right 
picture, we evaluated a set of performance indicator inside of the in the IMM indicators. And uh, uh, as these indicators have very different, uh, let's say, absolute values, because they can range from uh, um, bike, um, bicycle path length uh, to energy consumption to volume density, we tried to summarize their, their impact on the area by estimating their uh, rank inside the other neighborhoods of the city of Milan. So we didn't assess only the performance of the transformation area, that is the one, let's say, uh, surrounded by this black dotted line, but we computed the performances of the whole neighborhood it was inserted in. So in order to understand if a project was better or uh, performing better or worse than a previous one, we uh, look at the final rank of the neighborhood inside the Milan, um, let's say, the, the, the full Milan uh, list of neighborhoods. And the result was that at the beginning of the transformation, this neighborhood was ranking at uh, 41st. Then with the Eco District project as 14th, with, while with an alternative scenario based, based only on, let's say, um, architectural criteria without any further attention to uh, the integration of other aspects, ranked uh, at 21st. Then we enter, uh, so this was the comparison between the eco district master plan and alternative uh, solution. Then we move from that and use uh, Revit, Dynamo and Green Building Studio to make uh, additional simulation based on some uh, uh, control parameters that were GFA, thermal transmittance, window to wall ratio, building thickness and the roof type in order to optimize some criteria as the energy use intensity, the heating and cooling demand, and solar radiation and shadows with different uh, criteria. Uh, for different, let's say, uh, management um, aspects, we divided the master plan into sub-portion and classified the building into uh, typological families according to their shape in order to limit the, uh, even the time for every simulation. And we also set a sort of height limit uh, for the buildings because the initial goal of the project was to have a urban transition from, from city to countryside. So we decided not to have, let's say, higher buildings than the one, than the higher one of the uh, adjacent urban portion. Here we started with the energy use intensity analysis and we see that uh, just few cases, the one highlighted in green, resulted better than the baseline master plan. That was uh, uh, the master plan you have seen with flat roof uh, and the uniform height of building. Then we deepen only those, let's say, better performing uh, scenarios, and we uh, tried to model the roof differently. So using a single slope roof, a south-oriented roof, or the flat one, and uh, also different window-to-wall ratio uh, aspects. And in all these uh, cases, the best performing was the, let's say, the third uh, element, that uh, refer to the increment of 10% of building footprint. So it results as better performing than the other. We can also notice that uh, uh, window to wall ratio below 30% are still, let's say positive, while as we increase to 50, it becomes, let's say the consumption becomes much critical. And uh, also uh, the south inclination of the roof resulted as the better performing for all the different GFA um, GFA simulation. We uh, also studied, as I was saying, the solar radiation on the south-oriented facade, and we noticed a reduction in the radiation per square meter when we increased the uh, GFA, even if the total radiation, of course, increased because the, 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 the height of facade was increasing. So it was not, uh, let's say, so um, convenient to increase too much the GFA in this case. And again, the building thickness type three, that was the plus 10% in building footprint result as the best performing for every GFA uh, simulation. Also, we analyze the solar radiation on the ground, noticing a reduction, uh, that is, it is pretty obvious of course, but a reduction in ground radiation while we increase the GFA. And uh, we uh, also a nonlinear relationship between the increase in GFA and the energy use uh, intensity increase. As a last step, we made a finer analysis on the shadows, adding the possibility inside the, the control parameters to 
modify the uh, roof shape uh, building by building. So having mixed uh, solution of buildings uh, roof inside uh, this uh, sub portion of the master plan having with uh, as optimization criteria to avoid shadows on the roof to preserve the PV potential and uh, to uh, have shadows, let's say, on the streets, especially in the uh, summer summer time. Our conclusion are that, uh, uh, first of all, we reduce, let's say, the acceptable range of GFA from this 130 to 820, between 160 to 260. And uh, that was it's at least a very interesting result from our point of view because uh, we cannot give the message that every kind of GFA is acceptable everywhere. So we need to put some limits according to some, even to some environmental criteria. Then uh, that the uh, scenario with an increase of 10% of building footprint was better performing than all the other for this specific case. And also that uh, mixing the roof type can provide advantages on the shadowing and uh, uh, PV potential for roof. And uh, also that the advantages of the parametric design tools can be exploited even while working just on building masses without entering so much into the detail of the architectural uh, definition, let's say into the architectural scale. And, uh, and the last one is that district performance assessment via IMM methodology can is able to effectively grasp the differences also between alternative transformation scenarios and not just between the uh, state of the art and one design uh, project. So from my side, it's, uh, it's all, and thank you again for this opportunity.